We're going to talk about Demo Megan McCain. Okay, Megan, my father, McCain, and what she said on The View, which is uh, incredible. So let's move on to that right now. Capacity. And I think the question Democrats have to reconcile with right now is whether or not race and gender are more important than qualification. So if you have... Only dumbasses actually believe that like race and gender are more important than like actual qualifications. And also inversely, only racist dipshits automatically assume that someone is in a position of power because of their race and gender rather than their qualifications because the subtle implication behind that sentiment is that only white people are uh, uh, deserving of the positions. Like they've literally worked for those positions and no one else has actually worked for the positions of power that they're in. Now, there are certainly dumbasses who say dumbass shit on the liberal side because they have been completely uh, uh, poisoned by, you know, like neoliberal, the uh, hyper uh, focus on identity politics, and will literally say things like, Yes, I'm like Tammy Duckworth, who said recently, I am not confirming any other Democratic democratic admin appointees unless they are uh, asian or uh, you know from a marginalized community it's like dude you're being fucking ridiculous okay when you say shit like that you are literally playing into the fucking meme you are literally playing into the meme that republicans have of democrats where they say democrats only care about race democrats only care about um what your background is the real answer here to everyone uh that is unfamiliar with my position is your race and your background only matters as far as those experiences guide your worldview. You can be a black person who is a gigantic fucking racist. Candace Owens is a perfect example of this. She is literally a black white supremacist who uses her identity as a shield to deflect away from criticism and to justify white supremacist rhetoric and make white supremacists feel comfortable about their deluded worldview. Being black automatically does not absolve you of racism. Being black automatically does not qualify you for a position. And being black automatically does not disqualify you for a position. Uh, in the words of Cornell West, black faces in high places is not actually a good way to dismantle structural racism. That's not how it works. That's precisely why the Democratic Party is able to elevate black faces into high places and act like racism has gone away when it clearly hasn't, when they are not doing anything to dismantle racist power structures. Having said that, I will repeat myself once again. I, I, I mention this all the time. Your background matters. Why does it matter? Because in a lot of instances, the personal involvement and the personal relationship you have had and the experiences you have had are dramatically different if you are, let's say, a black person from a very poor neighborhood. So having that personal experience is going to allow you to make better decisions than someone who does not have that personal experience. Your background matters only as far as it guides your worldview, only as far as it guides your ideology. So what's your solution? The only way to stop racist white people from being in high places is to literally physically remove them? Okay, we are not currently talking about firing racist people after they've demonstrated that they're racist or operated uh, at the behest of white supremacist ideology. We're talking about hiring people and we're talking about the qualifications of people. If you act like no matter who the person is, if they're not from a marginalized background, that like you're not going to hire them or you're going to stand in opposition to hiring them, you're an idiot. If you act like, for example, I am going to have a black VP, a black female VP for no other reason than the fact that they are black and female like Joe Biden did. You are literally playing into the meme. Kamala Harris is perfectly fine as far as like qualifications goes. Okay. She is not my choice. I don't like her, but as far as qualifications goes, she has the bona fides. She could be a vice president. She could be a president. However, when you turn around and you fucking say shit like, I'm just hiring her because she's black and, and, a, and a woman, Jack, you literally, unironically, play into the meme that conservatives portray uh, uh, Democrats as. I'm going to talk about Meghan McCain's hair in a little bit. I just didn't want to be so sexist, sweaty, because you only care about a woman's hair because you're sexist. Um, well, I fucking care about uh, Meghan McCain's hair because she looks like uh, uh, she was cast as an extra on fucking Star Wars. She's supposed to be standing behind like Padme or some shit. 
uh, but uh, I, her takes are so fucking biblically stupid that I first wanted to focus on that before I got into it. I believe that what makes America exceptional is the fact that we're a meritocracy, that you can be anything, that you can come from anywhere. Meritocracy is a lie. The irony of Meghan McCain saying that there is a meritocracy in the United States is even funnier considering the fact that she only has this show because of her fucking dead father. Incredible stuff. In fucking credible stuff. Hey, takes one to no one. Nepotism is fucking poggers, okay? Nepotism is the reason why she literally has a fucking job. And to those who keep saying, Hassan, what the fuck are you talking about? It's because of your multi-billionaire uncle and his uh, incredibly uh, successful media company. That's the reason why you're where you're at right now. Well, there you go. You admitted it. Meritocracy is a fucking lie. Thank you for making my point for me. It's good to know that luck played a large role, even if you're hard work uh, as well. Oh, no, absolutely. It's never one fucking thing, okay? It's never one thing. I definitely work super fucking hard, as uh, most of you know. I also uh, got super lucky, most significantly, I would say. I got super fucking lucky. I worked hard, I worked smart, but I got super fucking lucky, and I definitely had a leg up, okay? That's how it fucking works. That's part of the reason why you rarely ever see people from... Uh, very, very uh, poor backgrounds uh, advocate for like left-wing positions as like leftist content creators because it's incredibly difficult to succeed. That's why you always see people that are in middle class or upper middle class positions become champions like or vocal champions of uh, leftist shit because the actual fucking poor people that are literally working are trying to survive. And this is a real thing, by the way. That's why a lot of the media uh, conversations around like what makes a real working class person literally revolve around dumbass media shit like uh, being able to say the n-word or not and it's like that's that's like petty bourgeois bullshit that most people are fucking talking about um because it's uh it's just uh, a petty bourgeois grievances of uh, upper middle class uh cornell graduates that uh are now working class uh white working class whisperers uh, they fancy themselves as like white working class fucking whisperers that's it it's actually insane to find out 95% of Hollywood also has famous wealthy parents. I hadn't thought it would be so prevalent in the industry, but of course it's prevalent in that industry. In order to make it in fucking Hollywood, you still have to work incredibly hard. You have to be incredibly lucky. You have to have the fucking network that works for you. But remember, you literally have to have backing. Like you have to be fucking... Guys, I come from an affluent background, as I've said before. Not as affluent as others, obviously. But like even then, I had to fucking live in a goddamn frat house. Okay, I had to live in a fucking kitchen of a frat house to live in Los Angeles, to be in this area. And I am more privileged than others. And even then... It was, uh, it, it was not the fucking easiest. You, do you see what I'm saying? So it is unimaginably difficult for people to literally come from uh, straight up uh, an option where there's like no opportunity for them and they have to make it on their own. That's the reality. That, that is literally the reality is like, like that there are always people that are more, uh, that are better off than you, but there are always a lot more people that are worse off than you. Another example is in the recent stimulus package, um, money was given to uh, minority farmers, but that d excluded uh, women farmers. And so we're going to a place where even if people need money, even if people are qualified to get into Ivy Leagues, race and gender is more important than your skill qualifications, the content of your character. It is not what Martin Luther King Jr. preached. I think this is a very, very slippery slope. Everybody knows minorities are not women, by the way. Minorities can't be women. So like when you're when you're designating funds specifically for uh, minority farmers, you're excluding women, which, of course, white women happen to be the uh, greatest beneficiaries of affirmative action. But that's uh, entirely a separate point. It so happens I just had this conversation with a friend of mine who said his son is getting into Harvard. He got into Harvard and his his father got into Harvard. So legacy seems to be the key to get into Harvard. Yes. The admissions process in colleges, specifically Ivy League colleges, it, the greatest affirmative action program in the United States is the legacy program. It's a class based program that is infinitely more significant than the affirmative action program that you uh, have for uh, marginalized communities. OK, a program that, you know, Megan McCain is a beneficiary of as well, considering her last name and considering her fucking qualifications have literally been 
to be John McCain's daughter. Yeah, that I just wanted to clarify in regards to the, the farmers. I was just concerned that women farmers were not included in the stimulus along with. Hey, dumbass, black women, brown women exist, right? Like, you know that, right? I, I don't know if you just like literally specifically think that like this program specifically was for black male farmers or some shit. Unless she like unironically is currently unaware that there isn't a specific qualification for women uh, that's separate from uh, minority populations or something. Is she straight up unaware of the reality? Like, she means white women, right? I think she's, that's what she's talking about. I, she has to be. Give like, it. what is this qualification? What about black farmers? But what about women farmers? What? Okay. Like, they're not separate. There are women farmers within the black farmer uh, population. Why, why is no one correcting her? Like, it's such an easy slam dunk for Whoopi to turn around and be like, you know, there are black women, right? Like, you're standing next to one. Like, you're, you're literally on the show with a woman who happens to be black. Right? Like, I'm right here, Megan. You know what I mean? And I yeah, the three genders is black, male, female. I, I would say to everybody listening, this is a case of saying, hey, you missed, you missed something. She, we would like some inclusivity here as well. Whoopi Goldberg, you are a black woman. What the fuck are you doing? Why are you covering for Megan McCain? I swear to fucking God, dude. What the fuck? The issue with farming is that the USDA and banks were not giving loans or support to black people specifically, so they earmarked money that could be spent on black farmers. It isn't a benefit. It's supposed to be corrective. Exactly. And it, it is, once again, like affirmative action, a band-aid solution, and obviously not like uh, it completely repairing uh, the, the decades of uh, issues that uh, black people have been subjected to. That's, that's it. That's the fucking heart of the problem. And uh, people getting mad at that is ridiculous to me. This is from a different episode of The McCain Show. I am John Look McCain's daughter. I am John Look McCain's daughter. I am John Look McCain's daughter. <laughs> um, the Obama administration really has to stop completely blaming everything on its predecessor. Completely. You think that's what Obama's doing? You think he's doing? I do, to a degree. Well, not to, not to enough of a degree. I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, not nearly enough. <laughs> Ronald Reagan blamed <laughs> Jimmy Carter for every day for eight years. In the speech. In the speech, what President Bush said, one of the things he's had to adjust to... You know, I wasn't was, born yet, so I don't know. Well, God, that's... <laughs> I, I wasn't born during the French Revolution, but I know about it yet. <laughs> oh, my God. Absolutely fucking destroyed, dude. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith defends preventing people from voting on Sunday because, God, let's take a look. Senator Schumer's question was, he was wondering why on Sundays Georgia would not participate in an electoral oh, wow. process of gathering signatures, of registration and things on Sunday. And I would just like to respond to that. Georgia is a Southern state, just like Mississippi. I cannot speak for Georgia, but I can speak for Mississippi on why we would never do that on a Sunday or hold an election on a Sunday. What a freak, dude. What a disgusting fucking freak. We will never hold an election on Sunday because it's God's day. You know, this is our currency. This is a dollar bill. This says the United States of America in God we trust. Etched in stone. First of all, that's not even a fucking founder thing, okay? That's a relatively recent uh, post-Cold War era thing. The in God we trust. So when motherfuckers say stuff like that and make it and tie it back to the Constitution, that shit literally pisses me off. Secondly, it's literally etched in paper and not in stone, you dumb fuck. Like, it's etched in paper and not in stone. It's been etched in paper since 1954. Literally, as a consequence of, like, uh, you know, godless commies that we were afraid of. So it's not like a constitutional thing at all. The founders were probably a, a little less uh, religious than you were, or at least the way you portray yourself, because I don't believe that any of these people are, like, legitimately religious. They just, like, play one on TV. Yeah, if Sunday's God's Day, why NFL games on Sunday? Like, there's 7 million different reasons as to why this is idiotic. This is just pure performative Republican identity politics, boys. That's what it is, okay? She literally, she got sworn in on a Sunday. Cindy Hyde-Smith sworn into 117th Congress during ceremony. You think there's some kind of voter prevention thing happening here? Yes, exactly. It is nearly a 99.9% .9 chance if a Republican is talking about election and like uh, voting laws, there is 
I, fuck it. I'm going to say it. 100% chance that they're trying to stop people from voting. Okay? This is how... It, it's literally it. That's it. This is the 100% chance that... Uh, uh, if a Republican's talking about, like, voter laws, they are probably trying to uh, find a reason as to why they, uh, they want less people to vote. In God's word, in Exodus 20, 18, it says, Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. God does not want you to vote. That's what God wants you not to do, especially if you're black. Black God does not want you to vote on Sunday. Black God wants you to sit at church, and that's it. No civic duties on Sunday, says black God. White God, on the other hand, you can, you can vote whenever you want. Vote twice if you can. Amen. She's been caught on video saying she wants to prevent college liberals from voting. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is shocking, dude. Voting is a sin if you're black. Everybody knows this. If you're black, brown, or God forbid, poor, you should not be voting. You should be praying to God and giving to your favorite televangelist all the money you got in the prosperity gospel. Amen. That's the only way to get out of your situation as a black, brown, or poor. Can you guys not vote to have separation of church and state? Is there is it too intertwined with American culture? There is a separation of church and state in American culture. It is probably the most American thing there is, my friend. A separation of church and state is American culture. It is literally way more constitutional than the inverse. It's literally actually what the fucking founders wanted rather than the in God we trust. It's kind of the reason why America was founded. It was kind of founded on that principle. A separation of church and state is not what the founders wanted. That's some liptard shit. Actually, the founders were liptards. You know, George Washington was a rhino. <laughs>